I take pleasure in sending a warm invite to Mr. Anise Khan, the Managing Director and CEO of Mutual Trust Bank Limited, to share his thoughts, his ideas, his wisdom with our students and guests gathered over here. Mr. Anise Khan. Assalamu alaikum and a very good afternoon to you all. Chairman, Board of Trustees, my very dear friend, and immediate past Chairman of Mutual Trust Bank, Mr. Rasha Chaudhary, my very good friend, Professor Dr. Omar Rahman, Pro Vice Chancellor, Dean, Server, faculty members, my colleagues from the bank, ladies and gentlemen, and of course, last but not least, the students of IUB. There's a lot of introductions have already been given and expectations are very high. So it's very challenging for me to stand in front of this very learned audience and I can see awesome people here. I mean, if I say anything wrong, they'll catch me and kill me. And uh, so what I have done is uh, taken the liberty of structuring a presentation. I will not speak to all the slides. And actually, I also really didn't know the exact subject, uh, but I always like to speak about leadership and about tomorrow's leaders, tomorrow's citizens of the country, because as far as we are concerned, we are at the peak of our careers and work, and soon we shall fade away. Our education dates back to late 50s, 60s. Your education is today's education. Today you have, you can Google immediately. I tell anything, you can point out anything I say wrong. And I use Google a number of times today for structuring this presentation. In those days, you had to look up the dictionary. And then you have to go to the library to look at Encyclopedia Britannica. So it's a long way away. So you have speed at your hands. So having said that, I will speak a little bit about banking because I'm a banker, though I really didn't want to speak about banking, but uh, yeah, one of your, colleagues, your faculty members told me, no, do please speak something about banking. So I decided to, I know it'd be very boring for you to talk about banking theory. So what I'm going to do is talk about contemporary events impacting banking, especially technology and the recent cyber attacks and what the modern banking is all about and what the future can be. And then I end up with talking about leadership. So proceeding onwards, so I've called it, call it my presentation, Banking Present, Future and Challenges in a Very Fast-Paced World. So here is an outline of what I'm going to talk about, banking services, the challenges in technology-driven banking. You've heard that I love technology. I read about technology every evening. I subscribe to various internet, internet feeds, which tells me what's going on in the whole world. There are many things I have to learn about. For example, they're talking about crowdfunding. So I read about crowdfunding yesterday. A lot of people like you can, all of you put together, let's say 500 takas each, and then we say we have a project. So you have become a crowd, which is funding the project. You don't need a bank in the future. And then people are talking about, uh, you know, lots of other stuff that's coming in, blockchain and so on. So we'll not go into all that because I myself don't understand what this block blockchain technology is all about. The cyber crime, obviously, Bangladesh is world famous now. We are famous for many things, you know, Bangladesh. So we are now famous, besides garments, we are now famous for the number one cyber crime in the history of the world, as you know very well. We nearly lost one billion dollars, but due to a spelling mistake, it came down to 100 billion, of which only 19 million, 100 million, which only 19 million has been recovered, and the rest, we don't know. Anyway, so that actually is very dangerous. It can happen to anybody, any bank, anywhere. The fact that it has not happened so far, we are lucky. The fact that some ATMs were struck and only 40, 50,000 or 100,000 was taken away, we are lucky. We got saved. But you never know what will happen because there are master criminals out there, absolutely very intelligent people. And I got that further in my presentation, so let me not take that away. Uh, some roles the you feature leaders should play in sites of leadership. So the realities of the modern day world, is just a spoke, volatility. The rate of change is too fast. Things become obsolete. You don't need a, one of those cyclostyle machine anymore. If you ask somebody, uh, what is, uh, we used to have that telex machine, I mean, I'm forgetting what is a telex machine. <laughs> when I joined the bank, we needed telex machines. If you ask some of the kids now, what's a telex machine? They say, what's a telex machine? We don't know. 
Then the fax machine is also becoming redundant because it's actually scanning documents and sending them by mail and then you're reading your mail in your hand, in your, in your phone that you have with you. The uncertainty, actually we don't know what will happen next. Absolutely uncertain world. We live for the moment. You absolutely has, have no idea what the future world will turn about, around and the best of disaster recovery solutions that you may have will not be able to handle those disasters. And you can see how those disasters happen. 9-11, those two buildings, twin towers fell. The best of American might and American planes and American radar systems could not stop it. This crazy guy going and killing 49 people in this uh, club in uh, Louisville. So you see, this is all crazy. In all no, not Louisville. Louisville was where, uh, yeah, Florida, where, you know, it's so much in the news, so things juxtapose. This is where Muhammad Ali was buried, his place. And then complexity, the decision, decision, decision. We don't know. Why well, shall I take that? If that goes wrong, oh, we have already invested so much money. Now, how do we recover from that? How do we innovate? And so on. And the ambiguity. There's a lack of cl clarity these days about the meaning of an event. So this is just a little cartoon. So uncertainty, sell, sell, buy, buy, sell, buy, sell, very interesting cartoon. So I thought I should show it to you, one of my colleagues gave it to me. So the world today, we are moving from a world of problems which demands analysis, and I won't read to that, but I must say that we need sharp acumen and vision to look into the future. These are just Bangladesh figures, so we can dwell on it just for a minute to show that we are looking forward to really uh, great days ahead, especially uh, 2021, when we expect to become a middle-income middle country, and all of you will be in the workforce. And the ambition, you can see that especially the exports, which is currently 36 billion is the target for this year, but we have approached about 33 billion. Uh, the target is 91 billion dollars. That's a tough target. But when you compare it to Vietnam, it is not a tough target. Vietnam is up there. And there you know they are a war ravaged, war sh shattered country. And I was there recently, and when I went around, I could see that their people are not as smart as you guys are. You are smarter. So they get that because of the discipline, because there is a one party state. So I, that's, these are different things, so I won't go into politics. Uh, and in, remittances has been said that it will become 48 billion. I think that's a very high figure to which the government has set. But our macroeconomic factors are under control. We have the lowest inflation rate for many, many decades now. Reserves are tremendous. Nine months import uh, requirements we have got. And everything else, we are doing great. So the banking overview is actually, it's banking is all about technology now. Banking wrapped around technological solutions and smooth delivery. That has completely revolutionized banking. Even 30 years ago, you didn't have ATMs in the Western world. You have the ATM now, and I say this thing, and people say, or they make fun of me. I'm saying that a few years from now, you won't need an ATM. So many machines, the Dutch Bangla Bank has put up 3,000 machines, I wonder. We have put up 200 plus machines, including one here. But you will not need an ATM machine in the future. The way you are having these payment systems on your phones, Apple Pay and so on, and so many other prepaid card systems which makes it safer, you will not need cash. I get surprised when I'm traveling overseas, I'm with my friends, and they don't even have two dollars in their pocket in New York. They use a credit card for everything. In London, I was in a supermarket line, and I saw somebody pick up a bottle of water and pay 50p with a credit card. He didn't have 50p. Then I'm thinking, what about the transaction cost of this electronic swipe and the person doing the swipe and doing all that? It's more than 50p. But that's the way it is now. In the modern world, nobody carries any cash. In fact, when I go, I'm the richest guy everywhere because I carry cash. <laughs> and I like to spend cash. <laughs> I don't like these credit cards, you know, so much. So this is the information technology revolution. And it has brought about changes and made so many millionaires. Mark Zuckerberg, he's a young kid, much, much younger than many of you here, 20 something. And look at him, he is a multi-billionaire. It's tremendous. And all the other things, things you have never heard of, Uber, car, and so many offshoots of Uber, and so on. And so many other technological revolutions have made billionaires and millionaires across the world. 
If you want to know a little bit about uh, financial intermediaries, I don't think you, you are all very sharp people. You know how the banking system works in this country. So you have a money market on your left, which is uh, made up of the central bank, Bangladesh Bank. And then you have banks like ours. And in our type of banks, you have the very large government banks, which used to be 80% of the balance sheet. Now they've become 40% of the balance sheet, while we have become like 50% of the balance sheet. And the rest 10% is made up by foreign banks. We have 56 banks in the country, 31 private commercial banks, and eight Islamic banks. And the rest are government, foreign, and specialized banks. In the middle, you have the, on the second from the left, you have the securities market, the merchant banks, and the brokerages. And then you have the insurance and pension and provident funds. This is the most unexploited, unexplored market in Bangladesh. And if you compare that with Japan, we are at one end and they are at one on the top. When we retire, all, of, all the people in the university faculty, we in the banks, when we go out of the bank, we leave the car behind and go in a rickshaw home. Just I'd like to dramatize that. And your salary is finished. You will not get any more any salary, any pension. Government people still get a pension till life. And yesterday I saw that if the spouse is a lady and she dies, the husband would get the money pension for 15 years. Now the, the husband will get it for life. So this is a benefit which the government employees get. But all of us here who work in the private sector, when you retire, you are zero. You have to depend on savings. So pension funds this is something is one of my favorite subjects everywhere I say. We need a national pension fund scheme which Sri Lanka has, which is compulsorily will be deducted from everybody's salary and go into this fund, we invested and when you retire, you'll have this pension. And you will feel you'll have economic security, which we very sadly will lack here. And so there's so much money in pension funds in Japan and other countries that they own buildings, they buy paintings, and they invest in so many things. So this is my real passion these days. And on the microfinance side, of course, you have the Grameen banks, you have BRAC and so on. So this is a little snapshot of the financial sector in this country. Still, I will say, unsophisticated in many ways, especially in treasury products and services. We really don't have modern advanced treasury products like derivatives and so on. So moving on, the banking sector, in Bangladesh, we were one of the first to embrace rapid globalization and benefit from IT. And now you, I'm sure many of you do online banking. Please tell me how many you have used online banking. See, I can see so many hands. Wow, wow, wonderful. Fantastic. So it also shows that the banks have been successful in rolling this out for your benefit. And actually, when I say you don't need an ATM, you don't need to go to a bank ever in your life. Maybe only to open the account you need to go. And that is it. And you actually never need to go to a bank. You talk on the phone, you do internet banking. Sometimes you may visit to see who your manager, what he or she looks like. And everything else, the SMS banking system, you can go to the ATM and top up your phone. You can transfer balances. It is just awesome. You can do all this stuff through all these means. You hear about CBS. So what is CBS? CBS is the core banking system, which is lies at the heart which does everyday transactions, takes cash from people, takes people's checks and gets them cleared and gives them money or clears their checks when you're paying money to IUB. For the story everywhere I go. In 2014, the end of October, I was in Boston at the annual SWIFT conference. So they have a conference where about seven, 8,000 people come. And it's a five-day conference. And the last day, they bring in a great guy from around the world, whoever it is, to speak. So that year, it was Bill Gates. So here I was. Because it was Bill Gates, I stood in queue. Very quickly, I entered so I could sit near him. So I sat in the third row over there. And he was right here. But then, he, he's very different. Uh, he comes from the rear from somewhere here. He doesn't come through main doors anywhere. So he comes, came through the rear, he sat down over there, and then he was brought up on stage and introduced. And he was interviewed for quite a long while by an American top uh, journalist, a lady journalist who comes on television. After that, he gave a 55-minute speech. And I recorded it on my phone. And at the 20th minute, he said that the proliferation of mobile banking services around the world will bring a revolution. And in a country known as Bangladesh, Mobile banking, there are 100 million connections. 
and on the back of that, a company named Bikash has taken money transfers to the villages. And a poor rickshaw puller in Dhaka, at the end of the day, he's able to send money to his family in remote part of Bangladesh to buy rice and some other stuff. He said that at that time. And I was the only Bangladeshi among 7,000 people in that room. So I felt very proud. My other friends knew and they're all looking at me. And uh, after about another 20 minutes, he again spoke about Bangladesh. And he said that of the four or five places where mobile banking has been successful, Bangladesh is one such place. So there you go. So how advanced we are. And in fact, our own bank has just launched agent banking uh, last week. And on the 27th, I and your chairman, Mr. Rashid Chaudhary, will journey to Feni in the morning to open our second and third agent banking centers. And it's very exciting. Agent banking is, uh, is done in very remote places where there are no banks. Omar. So it's very interesting, this one. And I felt great going to this very beautiful village in Kumilla. And nowhere near is a bank. But then there are like seven, 800 people waiting to hear from us what agent banking will do. And I think it's exciting, absolutely, about financial inclusion, including all Bangladeshis in the financial services network. See, it's so one more step, taking Bangladesh towards prosperity. So this is all there. I won't speak about it. The electronic funds transfer, you know, there is an automated. Nowadays, before, if you want your insurance premium paid, it goes now automatically. If your insurance policy matures, you just send a letter to the insurance company. And your money is credited to your account automatically. You don't have to run after anybody anymore to ensure that the, you get the check and put it in a bank so it comes in. See, automated teller machine ATM now, what we are doing now to make it safer, so we are put in, actually most of our machines have anti-skimming devices. It's a radiation field. When you go and put your card there, no other, you know, all the thieves cannot scan it. So we are installing all that in the machines which already don't have it. And, uh, of, and we have also introduced pin, uh, pins in addition to the chip. There's a chip now in every card that you will get. And in fact, in many countries, they will not accept your card without a chip. So it's a chip and pin. And you don't give your card away. Remember this, please, one lesson. Don't give your card away to the merchant. You ask him or you ask him to do it in front of you. You put it in, you put your pin, and the transaction is done. You never let go of your own card. So please remember that. And if you have any doubt that your card can be compromised, please ask your bank to replace it. They'll replace it without any charge for you. The point of sale, you'll hear this word point of sale. What is a point of sale? Point of sale is the machine on the one on, on the, over here. This one. Uh, so that's, that is, you know, this we give to all our merchants. Who are merchants? They're retail shops. Retail shops are all merchants. So they have these machines and they swipe it and immediately it hits your, you know, credit card or debit card, whatever it is. And it's actually a very good way of payment, and everybody likes to use this. And debit cards is like cash. In the village when I went to Kumilla, I told the people that you don't want to carry 5,000 takas in your pocket when you go home at 10 o'clock at night. You need to carry only three or 300 takas, because a mugger will catch you, and you still need to give him something. If you have nothing, he'll beat you more. So give him something. <laughs> so the rest, most of the money, you should actually have in the bank, and it should stay in the bank, and you use a debit card. And there are ATMs actually in most places that you go to in Bangladesh. So you can use any card in any ATM these days because there's something known as a national payment switch, which is run by the central bank. So under the national payment switch, all ATMs in Bangladesh are integrated. It doesn't matter if you have a Dutch Bangla card or MTV card. You can go to Prime Bank machine and put your card in and you will get the money. No problem with that. And of course, credit cards. Credit cards is actually a loan. And be careful about credit cards, please. As good as they are, as convenient as they are, uh, but please do not pile up debt on credit cards. When the money comes to you, please pay it immediately. If you start delaying, the interest rate on credit cards is too high. It used to be 35% before, 30% before. Now it is still 20 to 24%. So if you're not paying your credit card bills, you are really in trouble. Only cost of it, you can get credit card at the time. If you have interest, you can get interest. My friend got ruined. He lives in, used to live in Hong Kong. On this credit card debt. He's still in ruins because of this credit card debt. Interest on interest. And they never forgive you. They send collectors after you. From anywhere in the world, they'll come looking for you. And this collection system is very strong. I'll tell you another story. I used to belong to a book of the month club. This was based in Pennsylvania. So every month I would get this catalog, and in those days you didn't have Amazon and all that. So 
I would like to buy two, three books every month. So I would buy these books, I send them a you know, demand draft in those days. You needed to go to the bank, buy a demand draft, and send it. And then they would send you the books. So once I bought some books, and of course, every few months they would say, oh, if you bought six books, you, buy, you can buy, select any two from this 10, and you get them free. So that way I built up quite a nice collection of hard copies, hard covers. So I sent the money. One day, one collector started calling me from all sorts of weird places. Hey, Mr. Khan, you bought this book, but you're not paid. I said, not paid? I paid. Oh, yeah, you're not paid. You must pay. I said, no, I paid. So I had to find out from the bank, track it down, and that I did send them $89 or something. And then later on, it was resolved. But look at it, how strong the collection system is. For $89, they're calling me, you didn't pay. So as I said earlier, just a little note of warning, be very careful about credit cards. You need them when traveling. Banking kiosk is something I personally like. It is a small space about this size where from morning till evening, you will have an agent waiting for you, sitting there, and you'll have two, three machines, cash deposit machine, cash withdrawal machine, internet banking, you can do all that stuff out there. Pay your bills, electricity, gas, whatever. So, small place, not much cost. Kiosks are great, and we have a number of kiosks. And Swift, let me explain what is Swift. We hear so much about Swift, and Swift has become the bad boy. <laughs> Fortunately or unfortunately, I happen to chair the Swift user group in Bangladesh. And now I want to hand over the chairmanship to somebody else. They don't want to take it from me. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so Swift is actually a cooperative body. We are members. All banks in the world are members of Swift. It is based in Belgium. We have no Swift servers here. The Swift servers are based in Belgium. And everything is done through Swift servers, and they're a very secure system. So let me say that whatever has happened in the country is a compromise. There has been compromise of the SWIFT password. Otherwise, it could not have happened. And the combination of the malware, which infected the system. So two things are at fault. It is not SWIFT who is responsible for this. Not that I want to defend them. It is just the fact that I'm saying. If they're at fault, I would say they're at fault. Because I'm only the user group. I'm not a SWIFT person. They don't pay me a salary. If SWIFT is not providing proper services, it's my duty to say you're not providing proper services. So this is SWIFT, Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunication. That is the most secure system in the world. So banking services in Bangladesh. So I've already spoken about all this over here, so I'll skip this slide. But I can tell you this much from personal experience that the services that Bangladeshi banks give you are one of the best in the world. You try to go and get service in a London bank, they'll not even look at you. They'll not even talk to you properly. You try to get to into your US bank, sometimes they won't even let you inside. So it is like that. But in our country, you go everywhere. In most places, you will be welcomed with a smile. And if you have a question to ask, they will sit you down, sit you down and ask and answer your questions, help you. And it is superb service, at least in the foreign banks, in the, uh, in the banks like ours. So the challenges, there are a lot of challenges in technology-driven banking. People don't, in the system, don't have knowledge, especially the older ones. They're afraid of technology. When I came and joined Mutual Trust Bank, most of the seniors didn't have a, you know, a computer on their desks. They didn't know how to type. They didn't know anything about email. So, uh, of course, because given my background, so I had to force this through. And it became very amazing that some of the older ones would go home in the evening and ask their children to teach them how to operate a computer. And today, everybody uses a computer. That's the fascination, absolutely. So, but having said that, some people still have a computer, a very nice computer in their office. It is there in another desk. It is covered with a burqa. <laughs> and when they need to use it, they have to call it call the PA. Hey, hey, shai bashan to, or khulen to. Amar ki jano message padhe se ke itlu dekhen. Khule ekta print niyashin, print out niyashin. See, bring a bring out. So it's like that. But especially in government offices, you see that. There is a lack of a proper strategic plan. There has to be, a, in addition to making money for the organization, there's a strategic plan. That what will we do with technology in the next five years? This is all that is happening in the world. There's a complete lack of that. And of course, an international standard communication channel is still weak in our country, and the costs are very high. And as I said earlier, it gets very obsolete very quickly. And Inadequate back end. You see, there is a front and back office to everybody. You only go to the cashier. You only go to the front office desk. But what's happening behind? 
And in, in addition to that, we have very large treasury deals. We deal with banks to banks. So those need settlements and reconciliation. So for that also, you need back office systems which talk to each other. And there is also has to be an audit all the time. And also, there is not enough still, despite what has happened in the central bank and us, still not enough coordination as regards technology. Now, while mention of bank robberies will often conjure images of mass criminals, remember the wild, wild west and the Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, all these Hollywood movies, people going in guns and running away everywhere and going from city to city being chased by cops everywhere. These days, you don't need to do all that. Bangladesh example is a great one. You just sit somewhere, push some buttons, and the money will be transferred to your account. Why go? There are CCTV cameras, there is a guard waiting out there. You know, there are all sorts of cages inside the bank these days. And you will get caught if you go and try to do a robbery. Definitely you'll get caught. But this is, this is completely changed now. And we have to really worry about this cyber crime or the cultural change. And, and regulatory scrutiny, everything is getting very tough. So cyber crime, crime again. And we do not know even where they will come from. And this happened in February, March, April, May, June. We are entering July. In about four months or five months, we still don't know where these guys are. This invisible god, they are like a superpower. I mean, those who committed this crime. I myself cannot think that you cannot find them out. So the prospects of technology in Bangladesh. So as I said earlier, you're already using internet. So, and with more and more people having access to the internet, and the internet getting faster, it's not very good, the internet speed in Bangladesh still. Very slow. You go to any other country, it's very, very fast. Even the electricity sometimes I find is wrong here. I want to charge my phone, it takes two hours. I want to charge it in some advanced country, it charges in 40 minutes. And it stays longer. I still don't understand this. Maybe somebody who works with physics and electronics can teach me this. Why, it's the same electricity. Why our electricity charge lasts for less time, and why in advanced country it charges faster <laughs> and lasts longer? I really like to understand this from a physics or electrical engineer. So with the increase in the number of internet users, it's a great beacon of hope for technology-driven banking. And then, as I said earlier, you don't want to go to the bank. You don't want to go to the ATM. You'll do everything online. So that now I'll move on to leadership, the role the leaders play. The leader can have a great vision. Oh, great, great, I'll do this. But if you do not engage with the people here, right there to here, and with everybody else, and tell what your vision is about, how will you realize your vision? Then you have to inspire the team members. Come on, let's go, let's run, let's beat the other guy. What is the other guy doing? Let's find out. Why is he doing this better than us? Find out. Just copy it. Because in these days, it's not rocket science. And you just copy it. Do not reinvent the wheel anymore. And one thing more, what we talked about earlier, that before when you joined the job, you were there for life. Your vice chancellor spoke about it. That people move from job to job. It's happening in our country also. Four or five years, they want to go to the next bank. Four or five years again, they want to go to the next bank. They are never settled. They always think the next place is the better one. The next place is the better one. So in this way, maybe they may gather a lot of experience from different places, but they do not gather a brand loyalty. It's something known as a brand loyalty, that I work for this brand, Coca-Cola or whatever it is, or IUB or MTB, and I'll build a new IUB. I'll do this, at least for a time, at least for some time. Let's say 10 years, I'll put it at 10 years. But four or five years, I find it too less that you want to move on. So that's when you need to enhance the commitment. And of course, Bangladeshi people are very resilient. Again, I tell this story everywhere that I go, that whenever we have a cyclone, a flood, people come around and help everybody. And after a cyclone, the next day, you hear all the sounds of sawing, thump, thump, thump. People are clearing things. But when you had this Hurricane Katrina, they didn't know how to deal with it. They left old people dogs and cats, to die in these floodwaters. Because they never know how to do this. They are not resilient. We are resilient people. Last year, three months, the whole country was shut down by blockade. But all of you came to classes, especially ladies. In my office, ladies from far away, they never were late in coming to the office. That talks about the resilience and hard work of Bangladeshis. Only if we were more disciplined and something else that was said earlier on by the chairman, uh, is the patience. 
we need a lot of patience. We are very impatient. We want the iPhone now. You're studying in the university, you want the iPhone now. But it's not your time to buy an iPhone. You can buy a clone easily for 8,000, 9,000, use that. Do I want a Rolls Royce? Do I, should I have a Rolls Royce? No. I should not have a Rolls Royce. And I cannot afford a Rolls Royce. And I cannot afford to maintain a Rolls Royce. Even in Bangladesh, a Mercedes Benz if you have. You want to change the filter? Every time you want to do that, you go to the shop, they will put some machine, diagnostic machine, they'll say 20,000 taka for putting the machine on. Just for putting the machine on to find out what is wrong. Oh, you have less oil. You need to change that. Okay, sir, another 80,000. You have come out servicing 120,000 takas. You take a Toyota, it'll cost you 6,000. So, never live beyond your means, please. And always try to save. As a banker, I will always say this. The Bangladesh banking uh, your savings rate is very high. I didn't talk about it in the chart. It's about 30%. Bangladeshi people are very smart. It is your money which runs the, which runs the economy, actually. Because the budget is only 18%, budgetary resources. The rest comes from your savings and bank loans. That's how the country runs. So, most important, we are very resilient, hardworking people. So transmitting the vision is also part of the leadership, as I said earlier. A shared vision involves everyone working together to make improvements in the organization. And it's transparent, must be clear what I, I want to do. Otherwise, how will you follow me? Transparent and engaged leadership is a prerequisite. Examples, examples, always examples. And always communicate. Town hall meetings, this meeting, that meeting, this meeting here today is also a communication. Because human beings can talk. Most animals cannot talk. Some animals can talk through signals. I watch sometimes the National Geographic and other discovery channels. Very interesting how the birds fly in a formation. If they did not communicate, how are they flying in that formation? And uh, so, but we can communicate. So we need to communicate and not keep quiet. So here I have got a number of quotations from the top industrialists and writers. So inspiring team members, Henry Ford, you know, another story I've got of him, I'll tell you in a minute, uh, the founder of the Ford Motor Company. So he said, coming together is a beginning, like here. Keeping together again, all of us from here is a progress. And again, working together is success. Henry Ford, when his son passed out from Yale University, and he came to the office to join, his father said, go down. Go down and put in, put wheels onto cars. And that's what he will do for the next two years. Put in engines inside cars. Tighten the screws and nuts and bolts. He didn't get to come into the upper office for many, many years. I don't know whatever it is. For many, many years, he could not come into the main office. He had to be there in the workshop. So when we joined the bank, as management trainees in 1982, I had to go and count cash. Then I said, one day, the late Shahid Noman, who was the manager, uh, managing director of uh, Dhaka Bank, he unfortunately died suddenly. So he told, called me one day, you management train, you come here. So yes, go inside the vault. The vault is a very dark room. So I went, you sit down with the chair, yes. Now you count all the soil notes. These are all dirty notes, torn notes. So I had to count them all. And then in those days, he said, okay, you take it to the central bank and go and change them, bring new notes. So I got on a rickshaw with a tin box in Motajil. Can you imagine? In those days, no problem. Nobody would catch me. I went to Central Bank with the steam thing, with another, with a peon. And then went there again. I sat there again. We counted the money. And then we got new money and we came back. So that is the way you have to start any work. You cannot be a shahib ker bacha. Shahib ker bacha has to go. Henry Ford is a big shahib ker bacha. So you have to go down to the workshop, get your hands dirty, get grease here, get dirt here. That will make you a man. Then, of course, the great revolutionary, Che Guevara. Che Guevara. So, he came here to Bangladesh also in the late 60s. I saw a photograph a few days ago in some newspaper. Very interesting. He said, we cannot be sure of having something to live for unless we are willing to die for it. Being the revolutionary he was, and he died, of course. I, I'll leave that one. I, again, I come back to resilience. Look at this guy caught in the quicksand, and he's trying to come out. So, rebound quickly from setbacks. We will have setbacks. Life is about ups and downs. Business is ups and downs, cycles. But the human nature being what it is, like your father dies, your mother dies, you grieve. But if you grieve forever, then you could not live for the future, yourself and for your own children. So you overcome it through a catharsis process. You remember your parents, of course, if they're gone. But 
you carry on with life because life is all about the future. They have served their purpose in having you, in teaching you, in disciplining you, and their you know, duty is over. They can't live forever. Neither will you live forever. So that we have to accept and carry on. So, Drucker again, I'm sure you read about Drucker, the old management writer and consultant. Effective leadership is not about making speeches or being liked, so you don't have to like me. It's not about my speech here. It is defined by results, a lot by results. But I completely don't agree with Drucker about attributes. Your attributes makes the leader. And he sets down examples for people to follow. Then this other entrepreneur, American author, he said the challenge of leadership is to be strong. A leader absolutely has to be very strong. Steely nerves. But he should not be rude. If I am rude, you will not like me. You will listen to me, and then you will go outside and start saying bad things about me. You use four-letter words also. Uh, be kind, but not weak. Be bold, but not bully people. You can't bully people anymore now. And before you could beat people in school, do lots of stuff. Now you cannot beat your wife. Your wife can, you know, file a case against you under the Cruelty to Women and Children Repression Act. So it's very dangerous these days. You have to always do the right thing. You cannot harass anybody. So be thoughtful but not lazy. Be humble and do not ever be timid. Be proud but not unduly proud. Don't show off. No arrogance. Have humor but without folly. I think this is a very nice saying. So what will you do you want to do, you should do? You get in there early. You sense the future. You prepare for it from now. And especially students, you should study a lot of other stuff besides what you're supposed to study. You should study languages, I think. You should study something vocational, take up some hobby. Do something, whatever fancies you, whatever you think. Painting, doesn't matter. Piano, harmonium, something or the other. You never know what will come to you somewhere. Especially when you go out in the world, to so many places we go for training courses, etc. There's always a cultural night, and they want you to sing. They want you to play some musical instrument. So if you can do that, you know, it puts you up there, and your country. So, the other one is networking. It's so important for me and you, to, for us to know each other, so we can work together for a better tomorrow, for a better organization, better IUB, better bank better studies. So networking is very important and of course acquiring knowledge. Never be afraid of anything. Never be afraid of asking a question to any of your teachers or me or anybody. It can only be a stupid question. And if you're young, even me, I can ask a stupid question because I don't know anything about everything, everything about everything. So I can ask a stupid question. If I don't know, I said, please explain this to me, what this all means. And always think outside, outside the box. This is very important. Never think, oh, I mean, baby, kurbo, baby, baby. find a way. These days, Dhaka tra traffic jam is thinking outside the box. You see some problem, you go left, you go right. Dhaka is really a jungle. In fact, I think some management consultants should come and study the Dhaka traffic drivers and the driver's behavior. It will tell you a lot about human psychology, how to deal with adversity, how to deal with frustration, how to deal with road rage. It is absolutely a classic. There's nowhere else in the world I think I've seen anything like this. Especially even now, the roads are all dug up. You can't even walk. You want to get done from your car and walk. Yeah, I like to walk. I cannot walk. You can't walk. You'll break your ankle. My ankle, one ankle is already broken from an old accident. So now if I walk, I'll have to be on crutches or wheelchair all my life. And the rest of you who don't have it, you'll join me in my club by breaking one leg. God forbid. So very, very important. Thinking outside the box. Of course, you must set goals. And always be ready to change. You must be amenable to change. You must be drivers of change. There's nothing else but change in life. You have to accept it. And talking, speaking, communication skills, please. I always tell some of my friends and the very senior people in the bank, that when somebody is talking, listen to him. He may be talking stupid things. He may be talking things you know better than him. But do not come in between. Let him talk. Let him finish talking. See the, all these American television shows. When somebody is talking, nobody else comes in between. Do not come in between. Let him finish. You write down your note. When he finishes, you say, Sir, you said this, but you said this wrong. I know better than you. Of course, that's your time now to speak. But Bangladesh, I see on At the same time, every now I listen to him, him, him. I don't know really whom to listen to. So I always have a tough time, though things have improved in meetings. Everybody wants to talk together at the same time. You go into a Japanese train. Everything is hush. Nobody is talking. 
you go into a Bangladeshi train or a bus, you can hear the sound. Everybody is talking. It's all shouting and shrieking. So Bangladeshi people need to know, have these better communication skills. There's no doubt about that. And respect, of course, and politeness and courtesy. So networking here is a bit of an elaboration. It's not about collecting contacts in my phone. Oh, I know you, I know you, and I never meet you again in my life. It's, it's not that. It is about planting relationships. It is not about hunting. It's a very nice thing. I read this again this morning, this one. It is about farming. Because hunt kolle to shesh. But if you farm, it will grow. It's about cultivating relationships. Don't engage in premature socialization. You'll be a better networker if you remember that. You don't try to get friendly with people whom you don't know. You build networks over a period of time. I'll tell you another story. I was in the bank in Chittagong. So there was this big James Finlay company in those days, big Glaxo company. In those days, you didn't have Square and Scepter, so everybody was running after them. So I phoned the finance finance master, they used to call themselves, chief accountant of uh, James Finlay, Mr. Mahinu Dinamit. I was a simple relationship manager over there in the bank, and I said, sir, can I come and see you? No, no, I'm not going to show any. I don't have time for you. You call next week, maybe next week. I'll see about that. And I said, okay. So that went on for quite a while. So then I started becoming friendly with him. Then there was this great personality, the late Mr. G.M. Chaudhary, who was FCA from UK, finance director of Glaxo, and he was our single biggest customer of, of the bank at that time. So to see him, I needed seven, eight days advance notice. And even if I went to see him, he would not see me. He would say, the chief accountant, he would not see me. But then over a period of time, I joined a Rotary Club. The late Shahid Nawan said, Anis, I was young, 30 years old. So join a resident, I don't want to join any Rotary Club. No, you go, you have to go. So I went there, and all the senior people were members. And of course, they made me work. I worked hard. I did things they told me. I did, edited the weekly magazine. I conducted a lot of projects, workshops, and they started to like me. In the end, what happened? Mr. G.M. Chaudhary moved the Glaxo office to Dhaka. He would go to Chittagong. And he is, I'm going to Dhaka, factory, can I come and have a cup of tea, coffee with you? Imagine that GM Chaudhary is now chairman and managing director of Glaxo. And I'm, you know, I'm a but senior, but not that senior, I'm not CEO. So he was, I was the number two at that time in Chittagong. So he's coming to see me, the same person who would not see me. So that's the relationships. You do not do premature socialization. You build this relationship. And Mr. Mahinuddin Ahmed is one of my best friends today. Lives here somewhere nearby. And always we meet each other and we're the best of friends. Knowledge sharing, absolutely. Sir, Jamunu Chami Jamuna Chami Buthegesi, J. Amar Vasri Buthogur Tagani. Tigas, Tapurami Galamuce, Amade Mutual Dust Bank Keruce, Ekanaja Shakas, Ukanagalam, Shikano Tagani. Bank Buthe Tagani. Sir. ATM, ATM machine. Okay. Sir, talking into price in the bank almost bond, sir. It is a sir. Sir, J post note, sir. I'm a major to finance, sir. Sir, sir, I'm a man. Action finance major or action banker, shuffle banker, who the whole Kiki Bishamaka local actor, even Kunkun Bishamaka, sir. Focus good to have a Jamie John Palo banker who the parable. First of all, I'm sorry that this happened at a horror Kothana. We have an automated system which flashes red. Johan Kun ATM at Akataka and Ekum Lalbati Jolly. The desk a desk a jolly. So we better find out Kalke Duru cannot chill on how this happened. It's not supposed to happen. I mean, I can see it also. All ATMs, money running low, yellow, take a deep yellow, and then light red, deep red. You see, it flashes on, our, on, my, on every computer of the bank. So I don't know really why this happened, and this needs investigation. And regarding uh, getting a banking job, you see, you, first of all, we need certain disciplines. You have to be able to write English, and you have to be able to do onko, maths. To be a successful banker. Then we see how smart you are, obviously, how you, personable you are. You don't have to be a rich man's son. In the last management training, we have an awesome management training system. Seven, 8,000 kids apply. 
and uh, for four or five thousand appear in the exams, not everybody comes for the exam. And from there we interview only about 300. And then finally I take this inter final interview with two outside experts, consultants, experienced people, and we choose as many as we can get. And fisherman, Baba Holo Grocer, and a number of school teachers. But they are smart, they're personable, their families sacrifice for them to go to good universities and study. Great sacrifices made by their families. I can see that in them and how smart they are. And they are now in the bank. And after going through our grooming classes, if you stand those 10 people out, Karki background, you will not be able to know. They all look the same now. Absolutely. So it's all about being smart. Being honest during your interview, written test to So once you reach the interview level, you have to be humble and smart, and you will come across. You will come across. There are a number of management trainees over here. Zulkar, would you like to share something? Say something. You can answer that question better than me. He's one of our more successful management trainees. As a third management trainee and the experience so far has been amazing. Uh, I think um, uh, MTV's brand image uh, has uh, increased quite a lot over the last uh, few years S uh, since uh, our bank started its management training program. And what can I say? I mean, our MD sir has already explained uh, the details and uh, I I expect uh, uh, everyone who are interested in joining bank to uh, consider MTV as it will be an outstanding experience uh, for but, but anyone. Tell him, tell him how, how, and what he needs to do. Um, you have to have uh, a master's degree or an MBA. Um, that is the prerequisite. And, and after that, um, you, uh, you'll be given uh, there will be a circular on the newspapers, and uh, recently, very recently, from since our last uh, management training recruitment, uh, you'll be able to fill out uh, forms uh, on online uh, on MTB's website. So after that, you'll have to pass the first screening process, where our recruiters will look at your CV, your online CV, and see whether you have the requisite credentials. And after that, you will sit for a written test uh, and followed by two uh, vivas back to back. And that's basically it. You pass the viva and you get recruited. And be yourself. And be yes. yourself. <laughs> right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. One more last question, then we have to wrap up. Uh, Finally, a lady asked a question. <laughs> Very good. I'm Sanjita Rashid. And so this is a quite personal question, but I would love to know your answer. So what is the one thing, like one specific thing that has like uh, influenced you to be what you are now at the first place? I mean, <laughs> what is that one thing? Sanjita Rashid. Yes. Okay. I joined Fozar Hartkaret College at the age of 11. So I was told that these colleges were made to build, make leaders for tomorrow, for the, for the country. So that stuck me over there. And the motto of the college was, still is, deeds, not words. Deeds, kormo, not words, not katha. So that struck into me. And I had very good teachers and mentors, and they always said, you're going to be leader, you're going to be leader, you're going to be leader. Tomorrow birthday, ek tarik na hai, ek tarik. Ek tarik lok jonta, emni leader hota hai. Anyway, so like, sometimes leadership is also very natural. The wherever you go, you become a leader. Whatever you do, you become a leader. Whether it's a job or a club or a friend circle, you become a leader. Friends thrust sometimes leadership on you. So I've been lucky it has happened to me. That everywhere I go, they make me do most of the job. Even when I go any place in Dasha Chaudhary, he sits back and he makes me do everything. Call me leader to make me work, actually. <laughs> so you can relax more. OK. All right, I think we should end here. Uh, just before ending, I must uh, again thank everybody at IUB and say one or two words about your chairman. And uh, besides being a personal friend for many, many decades, uh, he was my chairman for two years. And I think you should do a research on the relationship between the bank chairman, non-executive bank chairman, 
and a CEO of a bank, how smoothly it can work, how it can improve a bank and make it very strong. And nowadays, he's no more chairman for three months now, but the strong profits we are posting, the way the bank is structured, the contribution he made to the structuring of the bank means that he's doing the same thing in IUB. That is why he has been reelected for another two years. So I have to say these words, and sometimes you should do a study. And never ever did we have any rancor, any bitterness, and anything he could say, because he's my friend, he could tell me on the face, do it like this, do it like that. And I can also tell things. So the communication, going back to what I said, fantastic communication and no fear. And of course, you're a very erudite scholar. Your VC, you're so lucky to have Professor Omar Rahman with you. I don't think of any other individual in Bangladesh who can stand up there, look at nothing, and speak in Ingriji, in Bangla, and speak sense and content and speak in 10 minutes what somebody else will need 45 minutes to speak. I can tell you that I don't need to flatter him for any reason. I am always impressed by speeches wherever I go. So you're very lucky in having him as your vice chancellor. So <laughs> with those words, with all the great things happening in IUB, I wish you from my bank all the luck and we are always here to support you as the chairman said in various events that you have. We are partners in progress. Thank you very much. I would like to thank uh, Mr. Khan for